I am Dr. Philip McMillan, and I am still shaken by the news that I received in the past week about breaking information about origins of SARS-CoV-2. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you must take a look at this. The truth will shock you. The link is in the description. And in that, you will get access to the video that these scientists have put together. And critically, they also give you a short PDF breaking down what they think is happening. And my aim is to try and understand the implications of the science. What is being discovered? But what does it mean for people? What does it mean for patients? What does it mean about disease presentation? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And so the two things we're going to do today, one, I'm going to take you through some concepts and some ideas that I have about this unusual protein that is in the virus, ORF10. I've been talking about that again recently and the implications that can have for health. That's one part. And as usual, we will open the floor to questions and you will be able to join me on screen where you can ask the question or make your comment to the audience as long as it's within um, standard words and logic. Please don't say anything that will get us censored or banned. So I'll do that a little bit after, but I'll take you through first the science of what I'm talking about. And as I said, this is big stuff. And I trust the sources that I have gotten this from. And they are putting their lives at risk in order to break this kind of information. This is the kind of information that got Snowden um, put away for all these years and any of these kinds of breaking news. So you have to remember these scientists and remember me as well for bringing it up that this is not going to be likely to be accepted as what they want you to hear. So remember to go and look at that video. It is really getting a lot of attention. You need to know about it. But let's get back to the science and try and understand the implications of the science. Um, just before I start, again, as I said, when I have been working at Concepts, and for those people who don't know, I was recently doing the Spike Detox Protocol. Based on the information, it's not just going to be spike. It's going to be literally every piece of the virus that we need to remove. That's also in the description if you want to join us in this journey of figuring out how to get people well. This is hard work. It takes time, and we all have to work within it to find solutions to make a difference for the future. So let's start with a few concepts. As I said, this is just about the science. What had been shared is that ORF10, they predicted one of the number of abnormal proteins. They had picked, a, picked up ORF11, uh, ORF19 as well, but I've focused initially on ORF10. because I'm trying to understand them one at a time. We don't have it in any other coronavirus, so it does fit that this is not a natural phenomenon. And what they highlighted is that it seems to have an implication with regards to clotting mechanisms. But as I was looking through and interrogating the science, I couldn't find what it was doing specifically with clotting. But it did highlight something about the um, ubiquitin system in the cell. And so I thought that I would share with you a little bit of idea as to how remarkable and phenomenal the human body is. And so you are composed of trillions, possibly, of cells. And here we have just one of them, just so that you know what it's made of. And this cell has in the middle the nucleus, and this is where all of your DNA is. And so your whole DNA is in the nucleus, and then the DNA gets written into RNA, and then the RNA goes into the cytoplasm of the cell, where it then goes into these um, the endoplasmic reticulum to make proteins, and that's how your body works. You have the mitochondria producing energy. Um, you have Golgi apparatus making up other proteins and adding um, lipids and so on onto them. 
So you have all kinds of things. It's a huge factory, each cell working on its own. You have lysosomes, which break down proteins. You have perioxisomes. But there is one particular thing that I'm very interested in, and I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, it's a proteosome, and this is where I get the connection with regards to what happens with ORF10. And as I reminded you, ORF10 is part of the SARS-CoV-2 RNA. We don't really know what it does. We don't know why it's there, but it seems to be there, and critically, it's not there in anything else. So we think this is a very important piece of the puzzle and we're trying to figure it out. So in order to understand what I'm saying now, let's go into the breakdown of this. Your body has remarkable systems. Uh, it's what we call ubiquitination of proteins. And this little molecule here, ubiquitin, is added on in a series of steps to a protein. And you may say, well, why is that? Well, the body has identified this protein as not being useful or good. So it adds ubiquitin onto it, and eventually you have these multiple ubiquitin molecules, and then this protein is then targeted for destruction. This is like the garbage system of your cell. You know, if you imagine you have waste stuff in your house, you put it out in the garbage bin, you put it in a green bin or a black bin, so therefore the garbage truck comes along, picks it up and throws it away, and then it destroys it, incinerates it, or landfills it. That's a very equivalent system that the, each cell has. And when you look in more detail at it here, this first bit is where this ubiquitin is added onto this abnormal protein. It means this protein is signaled for destruction. And then this proteasome, which is like a, a mass, ma massive machine, that just chews it all up and spits out little pieces of it and releases the ubiquitin to continue the cycle. And this is a very important part of how your cell functions. And these proteasomes are in all parts of the cell, not just in the cytoplasm, but in the nucleus, all over, and they are working all the time to clear up the garbage that is in your cell. When you have diseases that affect that, you then end up with a buildup of abnormal proteins. And that's why you can see things like with Parkinson's, with Alzheimer's, with um, amyloid and so on. And lots of diseases where you have abnormal proteins occurring and the body can't get rid of them. Here is another angle of that concept. And here we have this abnormal protein here. It binds to here. The ubiquitin is added. It's added again, and then you have this polyubiquination before it then goes into the proteasome and is destroyed. And this is the cycle that keeps on going. Perfect. Now, here is the interesting bit with ORF10. It blocks here. So this process of taking abnormal proteins and destroying them gets blocked by ORF10. And ORF10 may be doing this partly because it wants to block what happens in the normal cellular response to fight against the virus. We don't quite know. But if you have this process happening where you can't add ubiquitin onto all of these abnormal proteins, two things will happen. You will start to have a buildup of abnormal proteins and you're going to run out of ubiquitin, and your cellular processes are going to be affected because normally the degradation products get reused in the cell. So the whole functioning of the cellular machinery will be taken apart by ORF10. Now, it may explain why when we looked at the abnormal clots, one of the things that they found was that it was multiple different proteins. It wasn't the same protein. Maybe because you have so much abnormal proteins accumulating in cells, they start circulating them, and then they accumulate into forming abnormal clots into certain situations. But that cellular pattern, if you can then imagine the cell now becoming packed 
with abnormal proteins and trying to get rid of it and moving it on to other cells and then them get coming filled and the ORF connecting this and destroying these cells over time, you then realize why we are likely to see a massive surge in any kind of disease that has this as its center. So you would expect Parkinson's to get worse, Alzheimer's to get worse. If you have specific kind of heart disease or um, abnormal collection of any kind of protein, all of this will get worse. This is the beginning of what appears to be an absolutely frightening challenge that we have to try and detox. Because if you have these proteins there, are they stuck in cells? Are they being replicated, these ORF proteins, and then being circulated? Are they contributing to the clotting factors that we are seeing or clotting patterns that we're seeing? We don't know. But somehow we have got to find a way to rid the body of it. And as I reminded you, if you want to join me, if you are not well and you don't know where to go, this is something we do online. We build this out. We try and find solutions. We go innovative and you can join us in that process. But yes, this is a big challenge ahead of us. And as I said before, if you have not yet seen this, you must go and watch that video. And that video is, um, is here. It is uh, literally, uh, if you can see it here, this is in the sub stack. This video here, I don't think that I could play it on a mainstream platform, but it is in it. It has the disclaimer. They tell you exactly who they are, what they're trying to do, and they break it down. And this is something that everybody needs to watch. And I have some more thoughts here about ORF. So please, if you have not seen that yet, I would advise you to take a good look at it. So that's my principle or my thought for today. And um, what we will try and do is that if anyone wants to join me and ask a question, and again, if you've been here before, and if, I don't know if there are a lot of people, I will just share the link here. And anyone who wants to join in with a sensible question, please, let's hear what you have to say. I will try my best to answer it and see if it makes any sense. So, as I was saying, lots of challenges ahead in terms of trying to understand the impact of ongoing viral circulation. And this is part of the reason why I'm advising people don't underestimate even a mild infection. Because if the virus then breaks through your immune system, gets into your systemic system, and then deposits some of these unusual pieces of machinery in your cells, there is no telling what can happen in the longer run. And so we have to find ways of first blocking viral entry, second, removing any transient bits of virus, and thirdly, we also have to try and find ways in terms of protecting you from this happening again. Huge challenge ahead, but believe me, there are many people working in the background who are trying to find answers, trying to see if they can make a difference to protect you, your health, and the health of your loved ones. Um, we've got Kurt in at the moment, but Kurt, just in case you are not connected in terms of your, um, your microphone and camera, so I can't bring you in. Um, I'll just quickly take a look at some questions here. Um, actually, I'll see what Kurt was saying here. Uh, most of what you say, but I've had multiple worsening of symptoms. It clots atrial fibrillation. Thank God. God be with you. Thank you, Kurt. That is, um, that is appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of work to do and a lot of people. It's important to recognize that not everything is related to COVID. Even though I say everything is related to COVID, what I mean by that is that you have underlying conditions and oftentimes what COVID does is exacerbate it, make it worse. It doesn't necessarily cause it. It's like fanning the flames to make things worse. And so part of the problem is how to address what your issues were in the past 
so that you can then get better. Um, I, we have here Rhoda. Uh, I've been hospitalized for blood clots four times in five months. That's really concerning. I'm sure you're on the right medication for it, but the question should be, why would you have to be hospitalized four times in five months? Hopefully it's not new clots that are occurring. And that would be very concerning because we would then be having an issue with the effectiveness of our normal blood thinners that can be quite, quite serious. After watching this, who can explain how these fantastic systems evolve from nothing? There must be a logical explanation. If God or creator is not the answer, then what is or who designed it? Exactly right, uh, Kingdom Come. As I say, anyone who looks carefully at the science and sees what the science is doing will realize that our body is fearfully and wonderfully made. There's so many aspects to it that are quite quite important. Tom has, uh, hi Tom, uh, what properties of natokinase, bromelain and curcumin can help contribute to help detox the body? I, I've done a whole course on this, you know, Tom, and the link also is in the description. And um, what I was saying, what I was explaining to people in that course is that you have to understand where the remnants are located. And based on my research, a lot of it is in the context of the immune system. And this is why I said if people have subclinical inflammation and they have lots of immune cells that are overactive and these cells then get infected or transfected with either spike or the virus, very often you have non-productive infection, meaning that the virus is not replicating in the cell but the machinery is still in place and the proteins can still be made and circulated. And that's much harder to try and address because it means that your immune system or your immune cells can last a lifetime. And so you have to resolve the underlying inflammation in order to properly get beyond it. And what I also say is that you have to be careful about the fact that as soon as you've gotten rid of it. If you then get another infection, you're back to square one. And so you have to look not just in the short term, but in the longer term as to how to address the problems. This is why fundamentally, we have just got to find ways to get people better. And that's really all I'm interested in, focusing on strategies that will help people to get better because when you are well, it is much more difficult for a virus or any other thing to break through your defenses. Sorry, Kurt, I still can't get you connected. Uh, thank you all very much for the questions. And I will look forward to sharing more information with you all in the near future. We will keep talking about this because this is very important. Have a great evening.